Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to our little webinar from, from Shore UK. Uh, my name is Tom Coleman. I'm a senior applications engineer, I've been working for about 12 years or so, and we're going to guide you through some uh, of the systems microphone portfolio. And I'm here with my colleague, Chris Morley. And I am the market development manager for Shore UK. Cool. So let's um let's let's crack on with this. So well, we're here in our little studio here, Waltham. We've had this for about a year or so now since all the lockdown stuff. So we can use it to do these little webinars to give you more information as quickly as we can. So let's let's crack on with our our little session, eh? All right. So let's take you through the agenda yep. of what we're going to cover today. Um, so we're going to be covering just a, an overview of all of the products. We're going to be covering Centraverse, Microflex. Microflex ecosystem and Duraplex and Twinplex, Microflex ecosystem, DSP and apps, Microflex complete wireless and the STEM ecosystem. And of course, like all of our webinars, we're going to have some time for um, a quick snippet on how to get training and some Q&A at the end. And it feels like there's a lot of stuff in there. And frankly, there is a lot of stuff. There but is. this is an overview. We're going to give you a quick whiz through all of these products just to give you some ideas of the kind of products you may or may want to choose and use in a particular webinar or a particular session. So let's have a look at these pictures. So these pictures kind of highlight all the various areas where you might use some of the sure systems products and as you can see they vary quite drake quite sorry quite drastically rather in their applications some really large rooms some really small rooms some have a, a much more flowing meeting some have a much more structured meeting so there's an absolute heap of products that we've got available um so without further ado let's kind of crack on and um we'll have a look at the various products we've got available all right perfect so we've got our motive range, the SMs, the PGAs, the beta and KSM, headsets, lavaliers, Centraverse, Microflex, Microflex ecosystem. There is a lot to cover, but like Tom said, we'll, we'll break it down into different sections um, and we'll make sure we cover as much yeah. as we can. And, and those who have got a musical background may well have seen those first range of microphones. They're the kind of professional, like rock and roll style mics, so they're not really the reserve of the systems area. So we're gonna work on those um, other areas there. Uh, before we get uh, fully involved in all the, the detailed stuff, we do, of course, have a bunch of user guides available on the internet, available on pubs.shore.com. So virtually every, any single user manual you need for the bits of Shore kit out there will be available online. It's a really, really useful resource. You've got the, the user guides, quick start guides, as well as the command strings for those digital items that have a, a, a little come out, come out thing available to them. Yep. So let's get started with some Centraverse. Okay, let's have a look at Centraverse. And so the Centraverse range of microphones um, are great sounding, just like all of our products, all of our microphone products. They're optimized for speech and they're immune to any RF interference with ComShield technology. One thing to note with the Centraverse range is the microphone capsules are not interchangeable. But they're designed to be a fairly basic, I need a gooseneck, cool. A Centraverse gooseneck will do you well for most applications. Absolutely. Cool. Speaking of goosenecks, there we go. We've got some goosenecks here for you. Um, they're XLR connectors and they have two bending points, dual flex. Um, and also these again are optimized for speech. And before we go any further, let's just have a quick breakdown into the, the Shure part numbers. Most of the time, the Shure part numbers are actually quite logical. If we have the slide back up, team, and that'd be great. You can see what the CVG12 and the CVG18. The CV is centraverse, so the kind of range of the products. The U, there's usually a prefix showing the range of the products. The G, in this case, in denotes gooseneck. And the 12 and the 18 are, of course, uh, the length of these particular mics in inches. So there's usually some logic behind the naming uh, um, methods behind the various microphones. So we'll point those out as, as we go through. But there's usually some logical way to work out from a little price list or a sheet mm -hmm. what device it actually is going to be without needing a description. All right. So let's have a look at some boundary microphones. These are, again, in the Centraverse. What Centraverse. does the B stand for, Chris? Boundary. Cool. Centraverse. Boundary. Um, these have different uh, different capsules. Um, there's cardioid and omnidirectional available, um, and it has an integrated preamp on these, and it is just a simple XLR connector. And available in black and white. Just like you see there, the white for the W, B for black. Imagine that. Getting the hang of this. <laughs> All right, so we have more of our Centraverse microphones here, and they're lavalier and uh, overhead microphones. Yep, absolutely. So the both the lavalier can plug straight into a, uh, any of the Shure wireless body packs, 
and the overhead mics strangely go up in the ceiling to hang down. There's quite a long cable supply with them, so if you've got quite a high ceiling, you're quite able to, quite easily able to to drop the mic down to the required height. Absolutely. All right, let's have a look at some Microflex. So as you can see here, there's a lot of options in the Microflex range. Yeah, um, the, 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 in this case, the, the Flex really stands for flexibility because there are so, so, so many options. We've got the goosenecks, desktops, boundaries, and the ceiling mics as well. So there are there are so many options. One with that, can we go to the next slide as well? So we've got the capsules. The reason we put this first is because the, the mic, these particular capsules or these range of caps are common to every single uh, microflex microphones which is why you get a consistent sound from all of them the idea really then is how do i know what sound i'm going to get how do i mount it so the cardioid cap super cardioid omni and the mini shotgun available there all in black and white we also said no cartridge because some mics are supplied without a capsule you buy the microphone section and then a capsule to go on the top of it but that's worth a mention to begin with all right so let's have a look at some uh, gooseneck microphones Absolutely. So again, MX412, Microflex 412, 418, 424. The 4 denotes the, the gooseneck area as well as the, the 12, 18 and 24 denoting the length of it. And the little slashed suffix would denote the kind of capsule and other accessories you have on the end there. Basically, there's a ton of different lengths. You can have them uh, with a preamp base with or without a switch. One that mounts directly on the table with a cable that runs off the side of it or with a gooseneck base uh, integrated as there. So plenty of different options. But again, the good thing is you know you're gonna get the same consistent sound quality. Yeah. The thing to note here is there are options. <laughs> yeah, speaking of options, we have another set of goosenecks uh, from Microflex as well, the MX405, 10 and 15. Again, the 5, 10, 15 refer to the length of the goosenecks. These are the ones that tend to integrate with the Microflex wireless capsules as well as ULXD and with the various bases we've got got showing there a couple of options for you they, they all have a flex at the top and some of them have a flex at the bottom as well that's called single flex or dual flex um they will either they will all have an led of some kind on there either a single color red led at the top or a dual color red and green led at the bottom and again three different uh three different lengths there for you all right a product that is new um is the mx415 dual gooseneck um this is well this this allows for a bit of redundancy for your higher profile or almost um presidential speeches yeah so if, if you're on a broadcast where he's like i need a gooseneck microphone you don't want to have two separate mics you can use this one because even though it's got one mechanical housing it just has two gooseneck components or two microphone components in there and they're running discrete cables down to two discrete um uh, preamps as well so it basically is two mics built into one so either for redundancy or just two different splits for a particular option so may not be used too many in too many applications but it's hey it's available yeah for these microphones there is a mute button Ooh. um it does exactly what it says in the tin. <laughs> yeah. So it's for the MX405 type range. Um, allows you to have a little quick uh, capacitive touch sensitive microphone uh, mute switch on there. Just plug straight into the back of the microphone and you're good to go. It'll, because of the way of the preamp mounts through it, you can also use it with the um, MX395 um, boundary microphones as well, which we can grab a picture of also. There we go. Um, so these microphones uh, work neatly into there as well. So you have multiple of those through your system. And that 395 brings us neatly onto the range of boundary microphones. And again, the MX39 is all going to be the, the various um, boundary type mics. Not going to go into full detail, but the 391, 392 and 393 are the ones that sit flat on a surface mount on the table. Again, interchangeable capsules available with them. The MX395 that you just saw, some pretty elegant little button microphones available to you. Three different colors, black, white, aluminium, three different polar patterns, cardioid, omni, and bi-directional, and some have an LED in there with a five pin XLR. Lastly, the MX396 um, dual and tri. This actually is a, it looks a bit like the precursor to the, the new modern MXA310, and it has either two or three uh, single element microphones in there that you can physically move to get a, a bi-directional style or a full car, full um, omnidirectional pattern within it. All right, so to complete the uh, MX range, we have some lavalier microphones to show you. Um, again, more options. We, we we give options, you know. Um, there, there's your cardioid. 
um, and omnidirectional and super cardioid for depending on the application is depending on what microphone you would really be using. Yeah, precisely. The, the MX18 series refers to the wired microphone, so they will all terminate ultimately in an XLR, so you can plug it straight into a wired mixer. But you can also buy the, the kind of microphone section without the preamp, and that's the WL185, WL184, and then you can plug them straight into a, a wired, sort of wireless body pack. So plenty of options there. Um, mentioned earlier about the overhead microphones, the MX202. Um, these are a bit of a precursor to our MXA910. Um, they still work. It doesn't make these redundant. Now we have the MXA910. They still work for applications uh, depending on what they are, but they, they, they allow for more flexibility. They can be hung at different lengths um, just to make sure it's uh, that quality, the audio quality is uh, is great. Yeah, just it's fair to say that in the last five years, the audio standard of microphones in the ceiling has definitely moved on, but it doesn't invalidate those for, for, the, for the applications they're still good at. Yeah. Cool. So we've got some accessories to show you as well. There's a lot of windshields that you can get for, um, for the uh, MX range of microphones, um, and we've got some bases as well. We've also got some shock mounts. Um, We've got some simple maths for you as well, just to keep you uh, uh, in touch of our product and how um, how we name products. So we've got the A400SM. Right in the middle bottom row, yeah. And then we have the A400XLR. And put those together, would you imagine, it's the A400SMXLR. There we go. You need to get out more, Chris. Oh, yeah, I do. <laughs> All right. Okay. Cool. So that, that kind of covers the, the traditional wired microphones from the, the kind of legacy style, if you will, of the of the short ecosystem. So let's kind of move to the, the more modern foray of kit that we have available these days. Yeah. So we have the Microflex ecosystem. Um, lovely picture there of all the devices in the ecosystem. It's, you know, some of the key benefits here, you know, it just cuts down commissioning and configuration time. The Shure designer, um, you know, that's our software that we can, you can load onto your PC. Um, and then we have our remote monitoring and fault diagnosis um, with system on software. Um, all of these devices are PoE or PoE plus powered. So there's no need for an external power supply unit, which, you know, is great because you're not running any sort of any high level power. Um, it's AES 67 compatible and just like the uh, Shure Audio Network devices, it features Shure Audio Network encryption. Cool. Again, some more key features for you. Audio power and control will go over a single CAT cable. That is it. It's Dante and AES67. Um, there's steerable coverage. What we mean by that is we can steer the lobes. We'll, we'll get to the lobes in a while, but we can steer the lobes of the MXA range of microphones so that we can actually pick up the room in the exact areas that we want to be picking up the speakers from. A parametric EQ on there and the audio quality goes without saying is excellent. Um, you can check on the uh, publications website that we uh, showed you this morning, but we've got all the um, command strings for third party control and uh, third party devices. So let's have a look at the MXA310. This is the uh, tabular array microphone. And there we go again, we're, we'll go back to that naming convention. We have a black, white and aluminium, and would you imagine as B, W and A and C. I told you there was some logic behind there all is. this. Told you. With this, um, it's got a, a, a user interface that you can actually control. You can either take away lobes or you can add up to four lobes for um, your uh, application. So just, just a quick word on that. So the traditional way to direct a microphone was to physically move it and point it at what you wanted to pick up. Whereas the benefit with these mics is that you can, once you place them on the table, the microphone physically is fixed. But in the digital realm now, you can now start to steer, or you can form a cardioid lobe to begin with, and then digitally steer that around. So you can have one lobe facing to me, one lobe facing at Chris, and have nulls or voids, if you will, in the rest of the area of the room. The benefit of that means you get less background noise than using a traditional Omni, which would pick up all the sound of the room. Yeah. Talking of omnidirectional, here is the pickup patterns, uh, the polar patterns of the MXA310. Um, we mentioned about the, um, the uh, lobes. They can be aligned in 15 degree increments and that can be done digitally. Yep. 
we have a torrid mode. Yeah, this this is a new pattern that we, we came out with when the MXA310 was launched about five years ago. It's a single pattern, and what it does is, the chief thing is to avoid um, HVAC and stuff, or air conditioning projector fan noise that's above the mic directly. The idea is that you have a null above the microphone and then can pick up sound 360 degrees around the, uh, like a huddle room, round, round table style thing. Now we've got some mounting options. We talk about putting them on tables. These will go on tables, um, not suitable for going on ceilings or walls, but we've got a flush mount and we can mount it on a table. <laughs> um, brings us on to the next MXA microphone in the MXA range. That's the MXA 710 Linear Array. This microphone features autofocus technology. It has Intellimix on board um, and it's available in two different sizes and three different colors, black, white, and aluminium. Has steerable coverage technology, um, up to the, the four foot version has up to eight lobes, and the two foot version has four. And you can, you can, do you have to use all of them, or can you choose however many? You don't have to use all of them, you can, you can pick, and you can, well, obviously you, you can't go any more than what the microphone will allow, but yes, you can delete the lobes you don't um, need them. if you don't need them. Cool. Um, again, these are all adjustable on a longitude axis, um, We'll show you some pictures of how these are mounted yeah, and so how the pickup pattern actually works. Yeah, so this one you can see, this is a pretty versatile array because you can mount it in a number of places by, by design. This one is, as you can see, been placed right down the centre of a table and they've steered three lobes front to back um, across that room to cover all the areas of that particular table. Yeah. This one has been mounted vertically on the wall in between two screens. And for this application, one singular wide lobe is, is covering the entire table in one go so no problems there at all i think we've got one last option yeah, here's a similar one to the first application but this time they've flipped it upside down mounted it on the ceiling and they've been able to cover that seven seated table with just three lobes you could use more you could use less it depends on the room acoustics ultimately but a pretty flexible microphone let's look at some mounting options you've seen how versatile it is there are different mounting options for this um, there's also a flush mount for the table, so it doesn't have to sit on top. You'll notice um, the black microphone there, that, that could be any color underneath, that is just a fabric wrapped microphone. Um, to sort of find out any more about wrapping MXA microphones with um, fabric, reach out to your local shore rep and they will let you know how that is done um, because we have to meet certain requirements before we start wrapping um, the microphone. Yeah, because the more fabric you put in front of it, you're going to restrict the airflow into it, which will impede the sound quality, ultimately. But yeah, it can be done. So last by no means least is the MXA 910. This came out originally with the uh, MXA 310, as I said earlier, has become an absolute standard in the world of, um, well, ceiling microphone usage, ultimately. Yeah, it's, again, steerable coverage technology and autofocus technology as well. Um, and it allows you to look for um, audio uh, in an X, Y, and Z axis, like a spotlight, um, like, a, like a torch spotlight looking from um, the top of the uh, MXA 910. It's got Intellimix processing on board, and as you can see there, it is certified for Teams, Zoom, and Cisco. There's up to eight channels or lobes that can be placed from the MXA 910. Um, again, you don't need to use all eight, Depending on your room, your room size, your room acoustics, you can choose how many lobes you actually need. Um, they're all adjustable. That you can adjust them into a narrow, medium, or wide um, pattern, and it just it sounds great. I mean, yeah, it's our flagship systems microphone for a reason. It really has revolutionised the way sound works because previously you'd have a like a gooseneck on a table and you had to very consciously address that microphone. If you moved to the side, it would go quiet and back it would go quiet. I mean, I just did that with voice anyway, but with the 910, because it's got a nice wide lobe and it's got the autofocus, which allows that kind of spotlight of sound that Chris mentioned to gently track you within a kind of a, about half a metre range, plus or minus either way. It means you get a very consistent sound from those rooms. And you don't have to think about the technology in the room either. You can just interact naturally. Yep. This is a ceiling array, so there are ceiling options for mounting it. There are not wall options or table options. Um, it can be suspended. It's a 600 by 600 tile, so it can be suspended in a normal ceiling. It can be hung on gripper wire or a vase mount. If you have a concrete construction ceiling or plasterboard ceiling, you can also get a hard case ceiling mount, um, and you'll be able to use one of these in your um, application in whatever way it may be. 
Now the MSA 310 is a very table-based mount and has a little tactile tactile function in it as well. So we recently brought out the, the MXA NMB or network mute button. So when you're not using an MXA 310, you can use this simple mute button into your system and use that to, to mute it. You can have one per room, you can have multiples per room, and you just hook them up in design that Chris will show you in a little while and just um, allocate them all to your system. So works well indeed. We also have our network PoE loudspeaker. It is just a loudspeaker, it is PoE plus, and you put this on the network. There's no need to run 100 volt line uh, for, with this speaker. Um, you can just put data drops down. Again, this goes back into your switch, just where all your other shore, network shore devices go to, and then it's all connected through designer. It kind of brings the whole ecosystem literally together, because you've now got the microphones, the processing that we're gonna talk about in a second, and now the loudspeaker. So all of the audio system is now uh, controlled by by, yeah, by the, the person that decides to install it and they have a known quantity and entity. All right, so we have uh, also Shure Microflex ecosystem. Um, it now includes a wireless. Uh, it's, it comes in many form factors. We, we spoke about goosenecks earlier. You know, we've got boundary, we're boundary mics, we've got body packs. These all come in the um, Microflex ecosystem as well. Um, it is encrypted um, up to AES 256 and um, it's it's already Zoom certified and it's, it's collaboration ready. You know, there's there's so many platforms that this will work with. Yeah, and the one thing to note as well is it's the first time we had a, what we call application driven wireless because we figured out what do people in boardrooms and conference spaces need from a wireless system? They don't need all the rock and roll features that some of our other, other products have. They want a system that just, you pluck it out of the box, um, and it just works. That's that's the key thing there, and so it's super easy setup. So it's a stable spectrum because it works on a depth band. Um, it's it's bi-directional because it's, it's a transceiver, and it is a simple installation. It's elegant as well. You know, you, you've only got one access point in the in the ceiling, in the room, or on the wall, depending on how you want to mount it, and then you have your base charging station. Yeah, it's worth calling out the bi-directional feature because a traditional wireless system, you turn it on, sync it, and it just goes. Whereas this one, because they're, all the devices are transceivers, they're talking amongst themselves, which means you can now start to control the traditional transmitters sitting on the desk, like put them all to mute or put them all to unmute or put them all in standby or wake them up. So there's a, a large degree of control available. Let's have a look at some of the components of the uh, Microflex wireless. Um, so we have our goosenecks, um, and this goes back to the goosenecks that we were speaking about earlier. Um, it's the MX412. No, these uh, the 405, the, yes. 410, 410 and 415 types that go with this because of the, the proprietary six pin connector they've got on there. But any of the four so 405, 410, 415 can work with this, yeah. but we're not gonna go into more detail on that. Yeah. Call us. <laughs> Um, and you can see the boundary mics, body packs, and handhelds. What you have, what you can see on the handhelds is there are different capsules that you can use, and that would depend on the application. But again, give us a call; we'll tell you which. There we go. <laughs> so, in, in in conjunction with the body packs, we need we can use the body pack without because it's got its own built-in omnidirectional microphone. But also we've got the TL or the Twinplex lavaliers and Twinplex headset. There's a, a whole bunch of options. I'm not going to go through the various details, but various different capsules and heads on there. Various different thicknesses of wire for super redundancy, as well as a whole heap of different colours. Also, <clears throat> we've also got the the Duraplex range, which is just one one notch down, but still super super high quality. Each of those um. Uh, capsules is a little MEMS capsule it's actually ridiculously waterproof so then I go to IP57 which is good enough for most boardrooms because these can be underwater for like 30 minutes <laughs> so if, yeah it should be good enough if your boardroom's underwater for 30 minutes there are bigger problems that you have yes. um, okay so we have the WANI as well uh, yeah so this is a bit of a legacy product because it's still still active and available but the reason we built it is because when MX wireless came out Dante wasn't so prevalent. And we needed a, a, a digital wireless system that could do analog in to ultimately analog out. So we built the MXW Annie um, to, to permit that. So it's basically the Dante off-ramp from MXW system. But the cool thing is it also contains a four port switch um, to connect your MXW system together. Chiefly one of those ports is PoE to power up the access point that you need to be the brains of the system. So it doesn't need to be used in every system that goes out now, but still a valid option if you need it. 
Then we have the MXW software. Tom, take it away. It kind of does what it says on the tin. It's a piece of standalone software that we now use to, to set up uh, or find, discover, set up and commission uh, the MXW system. So easy to use, pretty straightforward. For those that used to use the web browser, it operates in almost the identical manner to that. So yeah, super easy to use. Okay, next we'll go on to DSP and apps. And DSP stands for Digital Signal Processing. We've got quite a few DSPs, um, so we'll, we'll go through them. We'll, we'll show you what we've got uh, and what they can be used with and for. So first of all, we have our um, P300. This is our, you know, our main DSP. Um, it is superior audio quality. It's got Intellimix on board um, and it's got noise reduction up to 18 decibels and it's got AEC developed by Shure. It's got flexible connectivity, so you can connect it to your hardware and software codecs, which is really important now because everybody seems to be moving to a software platform of some sort. It has a USB connection for laptop and desktop PCs, and you can even connect smartphones or tablets should you wish to. Let's have a look at how we would connect all the devices before we move on to the next slide. <clears throat> so these are our network devices that you can see down the side is the 310, 910 and MXW. And the 710 of course. And the 710 of course. Um, all of these devices go back to your network switch. From your network switch that is then connected to the DSP so it can communicate and do all of the communication between them. Just a quick heads up on that last slide, the P300 can receive eight microphone channels on Dante, so you've been likely to have all of those mics used at once, but it's kind of a pair of 310s or a couple of 910s or eight channels of MXW, for example. Yeah. So we'll just look at how we can connect some hardware. Um, you see the different um, connection options on the back. Um, from the uh, left to right, you've got a, a, a jack uh, that you can plug in with your phone. Um, you can plug in direct with USB of your laptop. And you can also put a, a hardware video codec into there. And again, like we see, that network port going out to your switch that supplies PoE Plus and feed into your other network shore devices. We have Intellimix Room also, which is our software um, DSP. It's got exactly the same processing as a P300, um, but it's just the software version. We, you know, so where, where would you install it? Where might it be seen? This would be installed on a, a Windows 10 PC that meets a certain requirement. If you want to know what the crime requirement is, reach out to us. We can let you know. Um, but this will be, this will sit on your in-room PC. It's not ideal for a bring your own uh, meeting or bring your own device environment. But for your standalone meeting rooms, absolutely perfect. And the algorithms are the same as on the P300 as well. So sonic-wise, it will sound identical to kind of a, a sure hardware DSP. It will. Cool. So we've got some Annie's, A-N-I, Audio Network Interfaces. Sure loves an acronym. Oh, we do. Um, so we've got an Annie USB matrix, which is the first up, and you can see just like the P300, there's different ways to connect different devices. Again, your Sure Network devices will come in over the network and be fed into the Dante port, and then you've got your analog ins and outs, and you have your USB connection as well. Just like we've covered there. <laughs> <laughs> I think the key thing to point out with this one is that last section where it says no AEC, no auto mixer. This is kind of an, an interface box, if you will, it allows the connectivity of like a mic that's got some onboard processing on Dante to come into the USB realm to be plugged into a BYOD computer yeah. scenario or get out to analog speakers and the like. Yeah, you, you, your 910s and your 710s is ideal um, with this. So we've got some more Annie devices. So yeah, they, these kind of do what they say on the tin. <clears throat> these are all Dante on-off ramps. The, we've got a bunch, a bunch of Annie 4s and Annie 22. The Annie 4 in, Annie 4 out are Dante on and off, with or without a block connector or U or XLR connectors for the pro world. And we've got the Annie 22, see what we did with the product number in there, 22, 2 in, 2 out. Very clever. Okay, in both block and XLR variants. Which then brings us on to applications, apps and software applications. So we've got a few that will help you get the best performance out of microphones, get the best performance out of managing them and setting them up. So we have Sure Update Utility. Sure Update Utility. It allows you to update your Sure devices that are on the network. Sure Device Discovery allows you to discover the devices on the network. Intellimix Room, which we've just covered, um, and that is uh, the software DSP. 
we've got Shore Designer, which you can pull all of your network Shore devices into the um, designer software and you can configure that whether you're on site, off site, and it allows you to plan, create, and deploy your rooms. Um, we also have System On. System On is our asset management software. We'll cover this a little bit later as well. Um, and we have our MXW app as well, which we covered earlier. Cool. Yeah, so as Chris mentioned, the update utility is great. It just works straight out of the box for it, it's the update utility is somewhat embedded in some pieces of software now, particularly for the MX ecosystem, but for other products it works great just for updating them on the fly. Web device discovery. Um, for those products that have a web GUI still, you can you can use this to basically find out what their IP address or DNS name is, be able to log into them and crack on. So you don't need a great deal of time, but useful still. And you can take this one again. Um, so this is a Shure Designer software, and you can see that you're able to pull in your network devices into this schematic pane. You can route them, and it will do with one click of a button. It will route all of the devices when you hit optimize, um, and it will give you the best performance out of your Shure devices. Sure. We'll look at another screen there with Designer, um, and what you can see, you can see the lobes that we spoke about earlier. You can see how the lobes have been deployed. So out of the box configuration, these lobes will cover a, a 30 by 30 foot square room. Um, and we've just, in this instance, we've just deployed them over the main speaker area just to give the best performance. Yeah, and this, this is where the whole ecosystem comes together because if you've got the loudspeakers up in the ceiling grid as well, you can see what their dispersion will be compared to where the seating area would need to be as well. So it really brings the whole, the whole thing together. Again, we've got system on asset management software. This is it's amazing uh, bit of software because you can, if you've got a, a university, for example, um, and you've got many different campuses, you can cross subnet your devices and it will work across the different subnets um, so you can actually monitor, you may have a building A over here, building B over here, but you can monitor both buildings in the same single pane. Yeah, otherwise your step count's going to be pretty high every day, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Um, and lastly, we've got the MXW app. We covered this just a second ago, but it's kind of part of the software suite, so we'll just cover it again. But yeah, it, um, it, it's the, the small piece of stuff that we use to set up, commission and install the Microfax wireless range of products. All right, so now we've covered all the software. We'll move on to Microflex Complete Wireless. I see a lovely picture there. Some, some of the key features of MXCW. Um, so you can have up to 125 participants um, on one access point. And that's 125 participants, 125 units that we'll look at in a moment. Um, you can have up to eight interpreter channels. So for a UN style conference, you can have interpreters behind the conference or wherever in a side room going on, and you can have other people listening to other languages of what's going on. It's worth mentioning that many of the other products prior to this one were designed for more what you might call conversational style meetings. So the auto mixing will be able to determine, ah, Chris is talking now, now Tom's talking, then gate automatically due, due to it. MX, MXW is, I'm sorry, MXCW rather is similar to that, but it's actually a, a formal button press of, I am the chairman, I'm going to speak now, uh, or I'm a delegate and I'm going to turn my mic on, I'm going to say my words, and now I'm going to turn my mic off again. So a much more managed, structured meeting, hence the, the, the requirement on the ability to have those interpretation channels available to formally translate what's going on. Because translating a conversation would be really hard, but to translate what someone is saying is much more straightforward. Yeah, Still we, hard. We, yeah we've seen these become so popular over the last 18 months for, for councils. Um, for obvious reasons, people can't actually sit too close together. So with these units, we've, you can deploy them over a large space, like a sports hall, for example, um, which will then allow all of the people in the, in the meeting, council delegates, you know, delegates of um, you know, like UN style meetings, um, it allows them to sort of all still work and vote and come up with new plans and whatever they do How in council. How to fix COVID. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we've got the MXW APT. Um, it's to, this is a, a network-based um, access point. Um, it allows for, this is, this is the device that allows for the 125 units. It's basically the, um, the brain of the whole system, it is, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Um, it's got a browser-based uh, interface. Um, you've got three different, um, you've got three different uh, modes on there. You've got chairman, you have admin, and you have um, display. display. Um, and that allows you to see voting, what's going on, who's speaking at the time, um, and some other cool things that we'll cover in a moment. 
So the next device is the MXCW640. Oh, by the MXCW, by the way, MX Microflex C Complete because it's got microphones, DSP processing, and the loudspeaker in there as well. So the complete audio chain and woofer wireless. So there, all these make sense. So MXCW640. Um, so like, yeah, just a pretty nice conference. That's the that's the only unit you have. You don't buy a chairman or a delegate because you can by the software determine which unit is which in terms of the other various modes as well. And into that plugs a bunch of goosenecks. Uh, a slightly different range because this has a different connector on. So from these um, seven or so options here, you've got three different lengths, single flex or dual flex, with the single flex always being at the base. Uh, and lastly, the um, mini shotgun microphone available to you also. Then we've got the batteries. You know, the battery life in Shure devices has advanced quite a lot over recent years. Yeah, in the last 10 years or so, the, 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 word, the push to rechargeable has been really, really important, coming from our accident analog system of 10 years ago or so. But it's, um, it's a staple of the, the modern environment, I reckon. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, you get 11 hours off one battery charge. Um, and as you can see there, from zero to 100%, it takes four hours. And to get 50%, you can have 1.5 hours. So from 1.5 hours, you get, you know, you know, five and a half hours worth of conferencing and meetings going on. Um, there is a storage mode um, for these charging uh, for this charging bay and batteries. That's if you're leaving this connected for any long period of time um, and you want them to not overcharge or not just be constantly charging. Cool. The last part, last component of this really is the NFC cards or near field communication. So you can, of course, name each unit like seat one, seat two or uh, John and Terry. Uh, but now you can actually start to have the NFC cards. So you have a pre-programmed card with a like a, a generic 40 pound reader or so. Put the names on it in advance using the NFC app from Shure. That programs the cards ready for use with these devices. And then as soon as you slot them into the, the device, up plugs the name so you, you, you keep your card with you and as you move around the conference room the system knows who you are or who's talking and this, this is great for voting purposes as well because you can see who has voted on what um, and um, it's, it just makes things a lot easier and slicker for council meetings so next we'll go on to the STEM ecosystem. So this is the last part of the presentation really, yes. and, and STEM, STEM is the newest part of our, of our whole area. I think to give it a bit of framing, the MXW, so the MX ecosystem is the kind of super high-end system that gets used, well, there's loads of them internationally or globally, I should say, um, but it does require, even though it's still easy to use, it still requires a bit of nous, but there's a whole heap of room sizes beneath where MX would typically go that kind of need a little, Kind of less specific um, in, uh, interest in how to make it get up and running. So it's kind of a, a quicker out of the box type system with some good plug and play features. That's right. So you see there a few devices on the STEM ecosystem. So you've got quite a few, very pretty picture. So let's have a look at the devices within the ecosystem. So this is the wall mounted microphone array and loudspeaker. It has 15 built in microphone capsules. Um, one of them is omnidirectional and 14 of them will track the speaker as they walk around the room. And as you can see on there, the light LEDs indicate the direction of the speaker and where they are in the room. It has an integrated DSP, but it's not configurable. Just like our um, MXW and MXA range, that is, is configurable. This is not, this is like, and this, the reason is, it's for your, you know, your lesser um, rooms in your, um, in your campus or your uh, enterprise. So that this is a speaker phone, right? It is. Cool. So you can connect it to it with a single USB cable and it just works? It does. Yeah. Um, it will require PoE. Um, that is how this unit is powered. Um, but if you're using one, one device singular in your meeting room, then you can connect it USB straight into your PC and away you go. Cool. We also have the STEM table. Believe it or not, it goes on the table. Um, and we have the, um, this has not nine microphone capsules. Um, and the LED lights again indicate the direction of language. Has it? I was going to say that this, this is basically the same, though, isn't it? So it's got the yes. microphone component, its own, own onboard DSP stuff, as well as a loudspeaking component, and still requires PoE and has a, a USB connection also. It does. Yep. Um, we have another one, uh, another microphone in the um, STEM ecosystem. Um, this is the ceiling microphone array. 
there's different mounting options for this as you can see um, there's a chandelier mode um, where it's hung and there's a low profile mounting mode where it can be in fixed into a ceiling this again is poe plus powered um, and it has a usb for connection direct in, direct into the pc although because this one doesn't have a speaker it's less likely to be used as speakerphone but nevertheless we've still got a usb on there in case you need it there's a couple of different um, there's a couple of different options with the um, stem ceiling. So it has a hundred built-in microphone capsules, and again the LED indicates the direction of the speaker. It has three adjustable options for the beam, um, and it has narrow, medium, and wide, just like the MXA910, but this is slightly different. It ha again has an integrated DSP. The DSP is non-configurable, not like the um, MXA910. Yeah, because the idea is you like, stick it above the area you want to pick up, choose how wide the pattern is, and tick, tick the box, job done. Yep. So then we have the network loudspeaker, and this, again, really sort of completes the ecosystem chain. Um, it has LED lights to indicate the device status, whether it's online, and is an integrated loudspeaker. As you can see here, you've got three mounting options. You've got a ceiling. Um, you have a wall and it can sit on its own stand, these two little lovely legs that poke out here. And again, it is POE plus powered. I'm getting the hang of this. They're all POE powered, aren't they? They are. Cool. So the STEM hub, this is the brains of the operation. If you're connecting any more than one device in your room, this is what you want to be using. This is what's going to be connected. Um, and this is what's going to pull all of these devices together. It has an analog connection. Um, as you can see there, and that is for external speakers, again, a USB. You can have Dante on this device here, and again, it is PoE plus powered. So if I had a couple of speakers and a couple of microphones in my room, um, I'd connect all of them as well as the, the hub to my system, and then connect the USB from my PC to the hub directly to aggregate all the stuff in the room. Absolutely, as long as you're not connecting any more than 10 devices. Ah, cool. This can be wall mounted, table mounted, or it can be hidden away. It's so, it's so low profile um, that it can be put behind a screen, it can be put in a credenza, it can be put under the table. It's really, it's entirely up to you. Cool. We have the STEM controller, and would you believe it? It's POE plus powered. <laughs> You're having me on. Yeah. Um, and this, this um, is, uh, acts as your SIP dialer, um, and you've got your admin tools in there. So you can do your room adapt, you can do your room check, and you can do your remote management. So this, so this is kind of the, you get your, your STEM stuff on the network, you plug this in, and then you can use that to firstly set your room up, and then having done that actually becomes your room controller as well. Yes. Cool. Yeah. So let's look at the compatibility. It is compatible with so many different conferencing platforms. The way we're going nowadays, it has to be. We, we have to be as agnostic as possible. We like to play nicely with other manufacturers. That pretty much covers everything in our um, systems portfolio. Um, just a quick note, um, we do have training that you can do online at our Shaw Audio Institute. Um, if you um, haven't already got a free account on the Shaw Audio Institute, you can reach out to your local Shaw rep and they will be happy to show you how to do this. Absolutely, absolutely. So I appreciate there is an absolutely massive, massive number of products there. I mean, we can't even remember them all, let alone, let alone you guys, you may have seen them for the first time today. But just to bring it back to this picture, like I, I made the point earlier that there are so many applications where sound chiefly for speech is, is required. And there are many, many different ways that you can achieve that and many different kind of levels of performance that are required as well. So I hope I've given you some ideas today uh, in terms of the various products that we have available for things that may or may not be useful to you in the future. So um, that kind of brings on to the questions section. I'm looking at the questions panels now. There are none there at the moment, but if you want to uh, stick one in there, then then go for it. But um, so I'll give it a minute or so and just see see where we go from there, basically. Cool. Um, what's the most interesting short product that you find, Chris? What's what's your favourite one? I love the MXA Seven Ten. Um, just it's so versatile; it can be placed in pretty much any environment, um, and it really because of the form factor, you can really go crazy and put this. You can put this on the wall. You know, a lot of the time you would put it above you or um, on the wall horizontally beneath the screen or um, above the screen. But there is an actual dummy unit 
So if you want to place it beside the screen and you want, um, it, it's a bit of overkill having two um, MXA 710s either side of the screen, we do have a dummy unit and it just makes the room look more aesthetically pleasing. Gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Um, well, thanks for that. There's one thing to mention as well. Of course, we are pretty well known for the world of wireless. And the only wireless system we, the formal wireless system we covered was the Microplex wireless. There are um, ULXD and Axiom Digital, which are arguably very much associated to this area as well. But um, they're kind of beyond the scope of this presentation right now. But yeah. if you need some wireless, give us a call. We will sort it out. Well, um, there are still no questions. So I think we will assume we are all good and done. So. It, I hope that it's been useful to you all um, and thank you for watching and catch you next time. See you soon.